Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Soren's Not Meta Tournament number five, round number four. So I know this is another match from round number four, but uh, technically this is also a match from Top Cut. Uh, so the best way for me to explain this is that we do cut to top five in this tournament, which is a little bit different from uh, regular tournaments, or I guess in tournaments in general. But basically the fourth and fifth seed will play, um, and then the winner of that will be in top four. So that's like the best way for me to explain it. And uh, both of these players got the fourth seed being uh, Mr. Manthanon getting the fourth seed and Hexagon getting the fifth seed. Um, so I think it's actually backwards. I think Hexagon got the fourth seed and I think got, uh, Mr. Manthanon got the fifth seed. I, I don't remember exactly, but one of them got the fourth and one of them got the fifth. So they got paired against each other again in top cut. Uh, but unfortunately, one of them did not, uh, was not able to play the match for top cut. So he just ended up scooping the match altogether. So uh, the other player moved on to top four and it happened to be the same person who won. So uh, I won't give a spoiler. That's why I didn't say which one of them scooped, but the the same person who wins this match uh, scoops in top cut, or I guess uh, wins in top cut. The the loser scoops again, if that makes sense. So uh, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference for the tournament, but um, yeah. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So uh, Mr. Manthanon is playing a very interesting list, which is a uh, basically Chaos Dragon Link, the Chaos Thunder Dragon Link, uh, which is very reminiscent of the list that was uh, played. Uh, I believe in 2019, around those times, in like the Orcus era, like Orcus Striker era, uh, with all the Thunder Dragon stuff going around. Uh, it's basically like the Ferris combo deck, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, and up at the top, we have uh, Hexagon, who is on Mermail. So it looks like Godomation is going to be opting to go first. Uh, starting off with a copy of Quick Launch, it looks like his hand is really strange. Um, there's not like a whole lot that he can do with it, but we'll see. So, Quick Launch, Summon Tracer. Tracer, Tracer effect popping himself, interesting. Uh, I think he's gonna do that just because the Quick Launch, actually you have to destroy the card during the end phase, so obviously he doesn't wanna lose the advantage, so he's kinda forced to use the uh, Tracer effect to pop itself. Um, and yeah, um, he just has to pass his turn, it looks like. So, uh, very interesting. And yeah, I mean, there's not really much else you can do there. So, Taste is going to be used to discard a water monster from the uh, Hand of Grave and special summon it. And uh, that should be fine to go through. He's going to use the effect to grab a copy of Abyss Pike as well as Neptibus. He's going to normal summon his copy of Abyss Pike to uh, send a water from the hand to the graveyard, or discard one, and then add a level 3 water monster from your deck to your hand. So he's going to be discarding this Neptibus out of hand, and he's going to search for, I think that was Gunday. Uh, and then he's good to get Neptibus' effect, which will special summon one back from the grave, which special summons the Dragoons. Then he is going to overlay into a copy of Bahamut Shark, and he's going to use the effect to special summon a copy of Toad from the extra deck. And then Dragoon should be able to trigger here as well, because it was sent to graveyard to activate a Water Monster's effect, since this is cost to discard, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I believe he activated or added Lapis Dragon, which will be special summoned here by its own effect as well. And then linking those off into a copy of Coral Anemone. He should be able to get the effect here as well to special summon back uh, Neptibus to the field. Using Neptibus's effect, he can send Dragoons to add, I don't know what he added, I think he added another copy of Goons, and then Goons is gonna add a copy of Mistral. So a lot of advantage going on here. He's gonna discard two to special summon this copy of Abyss Megalo maybe? Um, Yes, and I'm not sure how that card got discarded, but it uh, looks like uh, Mr. Manthanon saw enough, honestly. There was a lot of monsters on the field, plus he had an gate with Toad, so uh, he pretty much just decided to scoop it up. I mean, I, I think that is a fair uh, assessment on his part. So he's going to be opting to go first again, and let's hope he draws a little bit of a better hand. Looks like drawing a little bit more of some Thunder monsters this time. He's going to use Thunder Dragon's effect to search for two more copies of Thunder Dragon, and Dragon Ravine discarding the Thunder Dragon to send a copy of Dark Worm to the graveyard, which will special summon itself back. He's going to banish a Thunder Dragon of the graveyard to summon a Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, and then he can link these two off into a copy of Heretic Seals, and uh, this is a Pendulum Monster show being the extra deck, but... Uh, I don't think it really realistically matters, but we'll see here in a second, hopefully. Yep, he does correct it. Uh, so then a copy of White Dragon Wyvern Buster is going to be searched, banishing the Black Dragon, a special summon itself uh, to the field. 
and uh, he's going to normal summon this copy of uh, Dragon Matrix into a copy of IP Mascarena, which is pretty good. He has two interruptions here. He can bounce with the Heratic Seal, special summon a monster from his deck, and then link it off with IP into a Unicorn to spin one as well. So pretty interesting, and Dragon Matrix is also going to get a search. Dark can also search for another copy of Dark, and he just passes his turn at that. So he didn't actually... Um, oh, he did normal summon. He normal summoned the Matrix, but... Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens here. So main phase one. And he's going to start off with Medallion of the Ice Barrier to go ahead and search for Medium of the Ice Barrier, which if your opponent controls four more cards than you, you can special summon it from your hand. And uh, basically it just floodgates uh, against like back row decks because they can only activate one spell or trap. But it's also a free extender, which is pretty nice. Moray of Greed is going to reveal two waters and then he's going to draw three. And then he is going to use Abyss Megalos effect to special summon it from the hand. And um, he's going to let that go through. And Spheres is going to go ahead and bounce as well. So uh, Infantry is going to also pop. I think it popped the Spheres, I think, is what he was trying to pop. Uh, I could be wrong there. Uh, and then Megalos effect will get him a search as well. Uh, spheres bounce, and then uh, he's going to go ahead. Um, I thought he gets a search with Megalo. Uh, I think I think he does, but uh, I think they just forgot it, but I think it's corrected here. So yeah, he said uh, he forgot the search, but he's going to search here. So he searches for Mizuchi. And then he's going to go ahead and activate Deep Sea Aria, banishing the infantry for a copy of infantry again. And then he should be able to use uh, Megalos effect yet again to go ahead and... Um, yeah, he's just going to chain IP here. I think, is Megalo once per turn? It is not. That is very interesting. Uh, so Unicorn is going to come down here as well. And he should be able to spin back this Megalo back to the deck. And, uh, yep, Abyss Scale of the Kraken is going to be added as well. And this is a monster negation, and this is a spell negation. They don't destroy, though, and it's, uh, it's not optional. It's mandatory, so you have to negate it, which is also really weird. But yeah, uh, Neptimus is going to special summon off of Diva. And what's really cool about this is this uh, actually makes Deep Sea Diva is technically a one card synchro eight. Uh, so you can actually send the Neptimus to search Dragoons, and then Dragoons can add a water from your deck to your hand. And you can add Lapis Dragon, you can add a lot of stuff. Uh, so he adds Lapis Dragon here, which is really cool. You can synchro eight with the Lapis and the Neptimus into like a Coral Dragon or a Brionac or something like that. And then you can synchro the Diva plus the Brionac into or your Coral Dragon. Or I guess not Coral Dragon since it's a tuner, but like Stardust Charge Warrior. And uh, you can make like a Savage or like Crystal Wing, um, something like that. So that's actually pretty cool. And uh, yeah. So Fishborg Launcher is going to be used here as well. So if he has a another monster in the grave and all the monsters he controls water, he can special summon it back from the grave. And he's going to synchro into Brionax, so exactly what I thought it was. And using Brionax effect, he's gonna bounce back this unicorn into the extra deck, get a search for heavy infantry, and then Goons should be able to yeah, the Goons was the search for the heavy entrance infantry. And then he's going to link those off into Abyss Alatia. And then he is going to go ahead and equip both a Spell Negate and a Monster Negate to the Sipless Alatia. And then attacking with Brionac as well as Sipless Alatia for uh, quite a bit of damage here. So just, um, yeah, <laughs> Brio's at 28, uh, so 56 damage total. Uh, then he's going to pass his turn. So pretty interesting. And uh, there's a lot going on here, so we'll see exactly what happens. I believe that... Um, this, so he has a monster negate and a spell negate, as well as, I believe, like a pop, because he can use this heavy inventory effect. So uh, we'll see exactly what happens here. So it looks like he is actually just going to scoop it up. <laughs> okay. I feel like he could have possibly, like, tried to... Um, to bait something out and then hit him with the triple tactics talent um possibly like by like discarding ravine and then i don't know i don't know i don't think there was a whole lot of plays he really could have done but i feel like he could have at least tried to bait something out and then maybe like use the triple tactics talent but uh i feel like the uh the spell negation would have just uh, applied first and then so he was kind of in a rough position altogether but yeah that's gonna do it for today's video it looks like uh there wasn't really a whole lot we didn't get to see a whole lot of out of mr manthanon's deck uh it is a really fantastic deck i was also playing it in this tournament if you uh saw one of my matches i don't know if i featured one of them but uh i will be 
probably featuring one of them very soon. And uh, Hexagon obviously builds this uh, water deck very fantastically. It's a pretty good deck being able to play through uh, at least two interruptions and, you know, still setting up two negates on his opponent's turn, which is still two negates and a pop, which is pretty nice. So, yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys for another video tomorrow. Thanks for watching.